Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to continue the topic on functions and talk about function parameters. So with parameters, you can pass by value, by reference, or by const reference. So we're going to go over each situation and when to use pass by value, reference, or const reference. So let's say I want to swap two variables. So let's say I have int a is equal to 10 and int b is equal to 20. And then I want to print out a and b. So if I print out a and b, we'll get 10 and 20. And let's define a function that will swap the two variables. So we're going to create a function that returns nothing, and we'll call it swap. And I'm going to pass in int a and int b. And for this, we need a temporary variable. So I'm going to create a temporary variable and assign it a. That way, this stores the value of a. So I can freely change a to b and then b to temp. And then what I'm going to do is call the function and pass in a and b. And then after the swap, let's print out the values as well. All right, so what we have here is a is 10, b is 20, and then we'll print out the values. Then we swap, and then we print out the values again. So if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see we get a is 10 and b is 20. And then after the swap, we get the same thing. So nothing changed. And the reason why the variables do not switch values is because when we have int a and int b in this swap function, the variables a and b are not the same as the variables a and b in the main function. So this is called scope. So int a and b over here is local to the swap function. So this is local scope. And the same here, we have a and b. These two variables are local to this main function. So we can have variables of the same name within different functions because they are boxed within the functions. And what we're doing is passing by value. So when we pass by value, we are passing in a copy of the value. So this a, which gets this 10, is not getting the 10 from here. Instead, it's going to be assigned a copy of the value 10. Now what I can do is I can pass by reference. So to pass by reference, I would need to redefine the parameters as a reference to an int. So this will be a reference to an int a and a reference to an int b. So in an earlier video, I talked about references in C++ and how they differ from pointers. And if you need a refresh on that, I'll link the video in the description. So let's save and run the program. And you can see we get a is 10 and b is 20. And then after we call the swap function, we get a is 20 and b is 10. So with the swap function, if I want to swap two variables, I need to pass in the variables by reference instead of passing in the value. So that is the difference between pass by value and pass by reference. And in case you're wondering why I wrote swap with a capital S, it's because there is a function of the same name that's already built into C++. So it would be swap a b like so. So if I save and run the program, you can see if we swap once and we swap back, we get 1020 again. Okay, so just to avoid name conflicts, I made the swap function capitalized here. And uh, yeah, generally when we pass in numbers in functions, we don't modify the variables of the numbers. Instead, we just take the values and do some calculations. So for instance, if I create a function that multiplies two numbers, it doesn't matter if we pass by value or by reference, we just need the two values a and b and we do the calculations. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get a times b is equal to 200. Okay, so remember, pass by value, we generally use this for primitive data types. All right, so next, let's talk more about pass by reference. And for pass by reference, we generally use this for class types, such as strings and vectors. So basically anything that we have in the include statements. And so let's say I want to take this name, which is Kenny, and I want to change this to all uppercase. Well, I can create a function that will do this. So I'm going to create a function void, and I'm going to do make uppercase. We'll pass in a string name. And I'm going to do for size t, i is equal to zero, i is less than name dot size, i plus plus. I'm going to change each letter of the name. So name at index i, we're going to reassign it to two upper 
name of index i. And uh, yeah, a lot of function names in C++ are very inconsistent. Generally, when we name functions, we want to do it with camel case. So basically, the first letter is lowercase, and then every word is distinguished with an uppercase. So ideally, this should have been to upper. But anyway, we're going to take each letter at each index and make it uppercase. So here, I'm going to add a print statement inside make uppercase name. And then afterwards, I'm going to call the function. So make uppercase, and we're going to pass in name. And we're going to add a print statement here as well inside main name. So if I save and run the program, let's see what happens. And you can see inside the function for make uppercase, we get Kenny all in capital letters, but inside main, the name has not changed. So this name variable is not the same as this name variable in main. Okay, so we are making a copy of this value Kenny. So what we want to do is we want to pass by reference because we want to modify this string. So I'm going to pass by reference over here by marking it with an ampersand. And now if I save and run the program, you can see inside make uppercase, we get Kenny and we get the same thing inside the main function. So when we are passing in by reference, we are passing in this exact name in our make uppercase function. So we are not making a copy of this string. All right, so if we want to modify a string or vector and pass it into a function, we would have to pass by reference. And it is not always the case that we want to pass by reference. So generally, we pass by reference because it can be expensive to copy a string or vector. But in this case, it is important that we pass by reference because we need to make changes to this string. And notice I said generally, because maybe we want to pass this by value if we don't want to make changes to this original value. So for instance, let's say I want to make a copy, then I would pass by value. And then I can change this so that it returns a string and then I can return name over here. Now I might have forgotten to mention, but if we return from a function, we exit the function immediately. So if I place this return statement before this print statement, then this gets executed and we end the function without ever calling this print statement. Therefore, we are going to print first and then return. So what I can do here is, since I'm passing by value, this name is a copy. Therefore, if I modify each letter of this copy to be uppercase, I can return this modify string. So I can create a new variable name upper, and I can just assign it the value that we return. So if we pass in a string by value, we can make a copy without ever affecting the original value. So I can copy and paste this. And then I will change this to name upper. So if I save and run the program, you can see inside make uppercase, we have the uppercase copy. And inside main, we have two print statements. One is for name, which is not modified. And the other is a copy with all uppercase letters. All right, so now you understand the difference between pass by value and pass by reference. Let's talk about pass by const reference. So I have a vector here. And it's a vector of strings representing city names. So here we have three cities, but maybe I can have more city names. Maybe I have 200 or 300 or even more. But for this example, we'll have three. And I want to create a function that will iterate through the vector and print out each value. So let's create a function. Since we're printing, we are not returning anything. So I'm just going to have it be void. And I'm going to call this print vector. And we're going to take in a vector of string and I'll just call this cities. So for size t, i equals zero, i less than cities.size, i plus plus. I'm going to print out cities at index i with a white space. And then at the very end, I'm going to do c out n line. And then here I'm going to print vector cities. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get New York, Paris, and London. So what I'm doing here is I'm passing by value. And because I'm passing by value, we are basically making a copy of cities. And this can be expensive because let's say I had a thousand cities, then I'm basically copying over 1000 entries in the vector, which is unnecessary because all I want to do is print out each value in the vector. For that reason, we pass by reference. 
So I can put an ampersand here, and therefore we are passing by reference. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get our three cities over here, New York, Paris, and London. Now finally, we have const reference, and it's basically the same as pass by reference, except in this function, because we are passing by reference, we can actually modify the vector. So we can add more cities in this vector, and we can maybe change some cities. But because we are only printing, what we can do is we can mark this as const. So this is known as const reference. And basically, by marking it as const, we are saying that within this function, we have this reference of cities, we are not going to modify this vector. So that's what the const declaration means. So basically, it is read only. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get our three values printed, New York, Paris, and London. All right, so remember, if we pass by reference and we are not changing anything, you should always mark it as const. And this is generally good practice when you're writing C++ code. All right, so we have pass by value, reference, and const reference. So hopefully you understand the differences between the three. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.